probably 45 degrees with no sun. And silly me, I forgot my heavy duty winter gloves. So I'm stuck with these uh, a little bit thinner. So I probably won't be flying too long today, but what I'd like to share today is a little bit about these paramotor lines. This paraglider, or a wing you might call it, is, uh, there's a name for each of these lines. So this particular paramotor, or paraglider, is called the Gen Carve. And the front here is the red color. Those are called A lines. Next is B, next is C, and next are D lines. And then of course you have your brakes, which is what I'm holding in my hands. Now your brake lines are probably the most important lines because they can control if the wing goes left, if the wing goes right, uh, which is very important because how I'm able to go from one place to another. But every now and then I'll, I'll take off and I'll notice I'll, I'll get a line over or one of these lines will kind of get a twig stuck in between them and they'll get tangled and what happens is, it, say it's on my right side and the right lines get twisted, it'll really start to pull me to the right on takeoff. And if I notice it, I'll just stop, untangle it, set up again, and then take off. But sometimes I get airborne and it may not be bad enough, but it's just, it's enough where the, the wing won't fly straight. It just wants to go to the right or to the left or what have you. What you have to do is you kind of have to grab the line and you know, pull on it, tug on it, try to shake it so that the wing will then reform to its original design uh, direction. And these are designed so well by the manufacturer that they go straight and they're very reliable and you can, you can trust the wing even in turbulent conditions. There he goes. A little bit to the left, Bill. Nice correction. Lean back, a little bit of right brake, nice, no problem. You have different people, and let's call them some of these lines that get tangled up. When you have tangled lines in the church, it is, it's such a sad sight because I think a lot of people think the attitude of, well, I'm not hurting anybody, right? It's, it's me and so-and-so. I'm not hurting the rest of the congregation, and I can hold a grudge. I can have hatred towards somebody. I can do these things because it doesn't affect anybody else. And that statement is just incorrect. How important is it that the entire congregation work in unison together? There's so many verses in the New Testament that talk about unity and how Jesus called for unity, either among his 12 disciples who would quarrel with one another of who is the greatest. And I think it's sad that in the church we had some of these tangled lines that really affect the direction and the design of the wing. Because when it doesn't go straight, no one's happy. And in fact, you can even have a crash or a congregation that decides to split, which is just catastrophic compared to what God designed the church to do. And that was to unify people, to, to heal, to repair, to figure out what the twig is and help each other fly straighter, smoother, and more successfully. As a son of a minister, I have seen my father uh, struggle with many congregations in their desire to, you know, not ruffle the feathers of the congregation, don't rock the boat, when really, sometimes 
in order to fix a problem, you have to expose it. And my father would find these issues and try to expose them because he knew a congregation that was hiding problems wouldn't thrive. And yet there are still many people who, who would rather sweep the problem under the rug than, than confess or deal with different issues. But even though life could tangle and could be messy, we are called to rise above our problems with the help of our brothers and sisters who carry each other's burdens. That's the design of the church. I'm gonna land and warm up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 